What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central. I am one of your hosts, the only host here, actually. <laughs> I'm Hayes, host of this show, and I'm here to talk about any and everything Chicago Bulls related. And this week, we don't have a lot um, on this today's episode, I should say, because I'm doing a lot more than weekly now. Um, and so as the season ramps up, I'll be doing uh, more and more things like heading into the preseason. I'll definitely be doing an episode after every preseason game. And then my plan is between the preseason and the start of the season to do a preview after we get to really see how the Bulls are going to play um, and just get some experience and watching them and watch this team come together over the course of a preseason. I may do a a preview breakdown player by player as well in between the preseason games. So be on the lookout for that. Let me know down below how you think about uh, what do you think about that content? If that's what that's, if that's ultimately what I decide to do. I like love to hear if you guys are interested in that type of content going forward on the channel. Um, but this week, I keep saying this week, again, I had planned on making this a pot, this show a weekly show, but then just, I, I, I love this team. So, and, and, you know, especially since I have the, the studio that I have and everything, it's like, why, why just restrict myself to doing it, uh, once a week? So we're going to definitely be doing it more than, more than that. But anyway, we're here to talk about Zach Levine's recent comments and as, as well as, you know, we, I've talked a lot about the positive side of the Chicago Bulls coming together and my expectations here. But also at the end of this, I want to talk about how the Bulls may have a rougher start to the season, not because of competition or anything like that, or not because I don't think that they're going to be a great team, but more so because it takes some time. It takes teams a while to meld sometimes. And, you know, I guess that picture would be more clear after how we see them play in the preseason. But that's what I'll talk towards the end of this video. The beginning of this, I want to talk about Zach Levine's comments on the fit between him and DeMar DeRozan. And so this is an interview that he did with Sean uh, Davini, I believe is how you pronounce it. I'm going to quote a couple things from Zach Levine here, and then I'll comment on them. First is, I think we all have the right mentality going in. This is from Zach Levine. We all have to be ourselves and learn to be a team. There will be roles that will have to be established, but at the end of the day, that is what we are out here to do collectively to win. And that that shows the leadership of Zach Levine. I think, yes, Zach Levine started his career in Minnesota. Um, but even then, he did, he's, he's not anywhere close to the player, the man, the leader that he is. And I think more so than us just see Zach really be our best player and, and lead the, the team stat wise. This is the year that and, and let me not say that it hasn't happened before, but Zach Levine's leadership is going to be extremely important headed into the season. And that quote makes me feel very positive about it. And the reason why I say Zach Levine's leadership specifically is going to be so important to what this team and how good this team is, is because your best player has to sacrifice. And that sets the tone. We know that we have veterans coming here. We have Vush, we have DeRozan, we have a player like Caruso. And those players are all, because they're coming into this team, are all you know, you would you would hope are coming in with the mindset of helping Zach Levine, helping build this team in that. And not to say that Zach, Zach doesn't have that, but it really ultimately is going to set the tone when you talk about fit between him and DeMar DeRozan and him and any of these players. For these players to come together, that's going to at times means that Zach not necessarily has to take a secondary role, but has to put people in positions to feel more comfortable and for them to build that camaraderie. And we talked about Zach. Zach has that. He's proven that he has that. When we talked on the last episode that I released with, you know, how he was deferring to Vush and passing to him because he wanted to make sure that Vush knew that he was going to be a part of this team and he was an important part. Zach has that mentality. He has that mindset. And it all coming together on the national stage. When you look at like clutch sports and Zach Levine being a free agent and him getting more endorsement deals, shout out to him with the with the Mountain Dew 2K thing, all of that like I said, is bringing more attention and is upping Zach Levine's stock in the NBA. But on the court, to help this team stock, Zach Levine is absolutely going to have to set that tone of sacrifice. And he's more than up to it. He's more than up to it. He played on Team USA. And that's another thing, him coming and learning and winning, right? Having the longest win winning stretch of his career since college and all of that, if he, hopefully he learned, and not hopefully, Zach's a smart guy. Z Zach saw what it took to win. Team USA was looking down there for a minute, right? They lost the game and people were just ready to call it out on them. For that team to come together the way that they did and go on the winning stretch that they did, you absolutely know that Zach Levine learned what it means to sacrifice and saw what it is to do that. And, you know, he's known that already. Like, 
But, you know, coming into the season off that, it's going to be highly important. Now, the the part that I want to really talk about and break down some here is when he was talking about the fit between him and DeMar DeRozan and the questions that surrounded it. Um, his His comment here was, I don't get that at all because that's just outside narratives. At the end of the day, we are some of the basketball players in the world, best basketball players in the world, and we have to know to make something. We have to know how to make something work. It's our job to get out there and get to know each other, obviously, personally and as basketball players. It's easy to make things work on the basketball court if you all have the same intent, and that's winning. And fucking hats off to Zach Levine. That's what you want to hear from your leader. That's what you want to hear from your best player. That sets that tone that I was talking about before, is that you, you, you have to have that, the mentality of winning, the focus on winning, the focus on getting better and improving. And, you know, they're in, they're in camp now. We, all, all five of the starters there, we've had pictures come out of, of Ball being there and everything, and that builds this culture. And the culture that this team builds leading up to the season and hopefully solidifies over the course of the season and just comes closer as they face tests and teams and uh, lo- lose games together and win games together, you want to see them build just that, that personality. Like, every player has their own personality. Every player has their own play style but a team has a personality as well a team has a style a team has like an air to them when you look at the 2011 Chicago Bulls team that was that tough team that you knew that they were going to they were going to tough it out every single game and you were going to feel them defensively and I'm not this team may not be as good as them defensively they're not on paper looking like they're going to be but you want when when teams come into Chicago when teams play the Chicago Bulls whether home or away you want them to know that they're going to have to fight for every game, regardless of what happens. And this team, this our best player having this type of mindset is exactly what you want to see. These are the type of quotes you want to see from him. And, you know, we there's been a lot. And, you know, it's starting to come around now. Some some analysts are coming out saying that maybe the fit thing has been overblown and they, and they talk about that so much. Yes, DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine ranked in like the top five players in who who's in isolation who like percentage in isolation or something like that um so you understand why some of the questions are there i've never said that i don't understand it but this goes into what i wanted to talk about on the back half of the uh, back half of this episode is that don't be surprised if the bulls show growing pains now those growing pains may be fixed through training camp and before the season starts may be fixed through playing together in preseason but don't be surprised if it's some very inconsistencies between the, the way this team plays and how they mesh together over the first first 10 or 15 games, just don't be surprised in that at all. And the reason why I say that is even if you look at, for example, let's say the Heatles, right? The, 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 also the, the Heat team when LeBron, Bosch, and Wade came together, they also had to learn how to play together. I mean, but go back. I can't remember exactly because it's been so long, but I know they went on a long losing stretch at one point in time. Um, so yes, you have to, I, I know as Bulls fans, we have this expectations and we see the vision, right? We see wh- how this team came together. And we also have hope that this team is going to win and excel the way that, we, that the way that they can, if everything works out, but be prepared for the media storm, be prepared for the articles on maybe Zach Levine isn't a big free agent. Maybe the Bulls made all the wrong moves in free agency. If this team goes on a two a three game losing street stretch. If they only win two out of five, uh, if they win like four or five out of 10, just be prepared that that, that criticism is going to go in high gear. not only Zach Levine as, as all the players on this team individually, but also the front office. Also the, the, like everything is going to be in question, but we shouldn't be surprised if that does happen. And the reason why I said that is just that it takes time for players to learn to fit together. Let's just say we had, kept this team for the most part the same and we just brought DeMar DeRozan into the starting lineup there would have been some growing pains there alone when you look at the turnover that we've had on this roster and the different just makeup of this roster now we have to I don't want to say taper our expectations because I do think I do trust this team I do trust the players I do trust the coaching staff that this team is going to come together and be able to work it all out but don't be surprised if it's a rough start to that I, I've said it before on an episode is that the team that the Bulls are that first month of the season is going to be vastly different than who they are the last two and three months of the season. And we have to allow that room for growth. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it as it happens. We're going to critique it. We're going to 
uh, you know, analyze it and whatever else, as we should and as they should, too. And they definitely will. But don't be surprised if that growing pain, if those growing pains do rear their ugly head at the beginning of the season. We want to. That's kind of what you if it if it's going to happen, you want it to happen early on. You want us to to maybe not look as solid out of the gates as we want us to so that we can have a better back half of the season. Let's face that adversity up front. Let's face that adversity at the beginning of the season. So that way it's another growing opportunity for the team to grow together and to figure out how they're going to play and be together as a team. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Like I said, not not a super big amount, but I think Zach Levine's comments, and Zach Levine's confidence too, for anyone who's like heard him talk or whatever, Zach Levine's confidence really seems to be through the roof, as it should for, for a player coming off, you know, a gold medal run and coming into a team that's, been, that's you know, going to be drastically approved by every measure, hopefully. So... I have full confidence in Zach, of course. Like I, I've said it before. I, I think Zach's going to come back. I'm not really even worried about that until it's time to worry about that. Um, but I really do think and hope, and I have faith that this team is going to be the team that we all think that it can be as Bulls fans. And all I can say is that we're going to face some adversity. Absolutely, it's going to be some tough times ahead. Um, at different parts of the season. Like I said, we may face it in the middle of the season. It may not be all up front. Who knows? But just don't be surprised if we show those growing pains. But let's have faith they're going to be able to work through it. Let's have faith in Billy. That's, that's the reason Billy Donovan is here, right? That's what his job is, is to find a way to work it out. I mean, it's the player's job as well, too. Um, but, yeah, that's overall. That was just my thoughts. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about on this episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Let me know how you guys uh, think down below. Uh, do you think it's going to be a rough start to the season? Do you think they're going to come out the gates and really work everything out through training camp in the preseason? And how excited are you for the preseason? We are only, what, 17 days away from the preseason as of this recording? Um, And I can't wait. I can't wait. I really can't wait. 2K is getting me through uh, my excitement. I'm enjoying playing with the Bulls on the court, uh, at least virtually. Let's just hope that it's all as much love when it comes time to play the real games. That's it. I'm Hayes. This is Chicago Bulls Central. Thank you guys so much for the support. You already know you can um, leave us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bulls Pod at gmail.com. No, Bulls Central Pod at gmail. See, I'm still getting used to it. Bulls Central Pod at gmail.com, uh, where you can you can leave any and all that in. Also, we do have a new voicemail set up. You can check that voicemail down below in the description. You, you can text or leave us a voicemail for any of your thoughts. I'll play them on the show or read them on the show if they're text messages. So. I uh, appreciate all the love and support. As always, we just passed 400 subscribers in right at 30 days. 30 days since this channel has been around and we and we passed 400 subscribers. That's for a show that I started and a project that I started that I really didn't expect to to grow. I just I just wanted to talk about my favorite team. I really do appreciate you guys. But as always, as a like signing off, go Bulls. Peace.